morning. Welcome to worship this morning, everybody. A few announcements to point out in your bulletin. Uh, there is one more midweek Lenten series. It's actually on the slides right now. We have our, well, no, that's the weekend series. Sorry. <laughs> but the midweek series will be on uh, Oh Love, How Deep, How Broad, How High. There's one more of those that is this Wednesday because next Sunday is Palm Sunday. Kind of crazy to believe, but it's here. And so that dinner that's going to follow afterwards is a spaghetti supper that's sponsored by our child care. So if you love spaghetti and want to learn more about our child care, you can come to that dinner after the service went on Wednesday. Um, we are still kind of collecting items for the Ukraine crisis that's going on over there, the war in Ukraine. Um, so Pastor Dave wanted me to announce that there was an announcement that came through that some of the supplies that we sent over there, not only us here at Peace, but also just here uh, from the United States, was sent over via plane and then actually got there the day before the war started over in Ukraine. So they had supplies right before everything kind of broke out. And we we're going to send a second plane over, and those are going to be collected. Well, the last day to drop them off is April 4th. That kind of information is in there. But just, sent, just to let you know that donations did get over there, your donations, your resources that you've been giving, they are actually helping out people over in Ukraine. So that's, that's good. Um, there's a job opening here at Peace. Uh, looking to help with cleaning the offices and classroom areas in the new edition. There's information in your bulletin. Camp Luther needs some summer help, so if you know any you know, young adult who is 18 or older wanting to help out with Camp Luther or camp activities, that's also in your bulletin. And then there is the Palm Sunday egg hunt, because next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and so they're going to have an egg hunt. Uh, Blake is going to be kind of heading that. And the last day to sign up for that will be April 3rd, which is tomorrow. That's just to kind of know all that we need for family. Today? Today. Today. <laughs> that is today. All right. So today is the last day to sign up for that. Um, any more announcements, you can kind of look through in, in your bulletin. Uh, but with that, let's go ahead and stand and offer each other a warm, welcoming wave. Let's say our Bible verse of the week together. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Yes, 
question will be asked us, how often we have come, although we oft have wandered, it is our Father's home. O all-embracing mercy, O ever-open door, what should we do without you when heart and I run o'er? When all things seem against us, to drive us to despair. We know one gate is open, one ear will hear our prayer. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for this morning comes from Jeremiah chapter 31. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have, con I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall adorn yourself with tambourines, and shall go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when watchmen will call in the hill country of Ephraim, Arise and let us go to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading comes from Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. 
Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now stand for the reading of the gospel, and our gospel reading this morning comes from John chapter 20. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated.
May the joy and the hope and the peace found in Christ be yours again today. And may this message reach your heart in a new and rich way. Amen. She was called for such a time as this. Her life was on the line. And yet she took those bold steps as a servant. She went to see the king, even though she saw her role as small and insignificant, God would use her in a significant way to save God's people from annihilation. Her name was Queen Esther. And Queen Esther led the second deliverance movement in the Old Testament. Not small and insignificant, but a servant of God for the purpose of God. Yes, we too are called to be those servants willing to take those steps of courage, to take those risks for the sake of God. But let me introduce you to another character who considered herself small and insignificant. Her name is Mary Magdalene. Let me show you what she faced in that first encounter with Christ. Let me share the video. <laughs> it's her. She's at it again. <laughs> Who is it? It's that teacher from Nazareth. Jesus. Hello. Hello. Turn around. You're not wanted here. Teacher, leave her. You should not defile yourself by even looking at her. Mary. Ah, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? We know who you are, the Holy One of God! Be quiet! Evil spirits. <laughs> Come out of this woman! She's dead. He's killed her. He's going to touch her. No, a holy man wouldn't do such a thing. Mary, daughter of Abraham, daughter of Abraham. She's all right. She's alive. It's a miracle. Who is this man? Even the spirits obey him. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. How could it be? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From that day on, I became his follower. I wanted to do what pleased God. I had lived in shame. But Jesus restored my honor. His power drove out those evil spirits. Sephira. Dinah. 
You heard Jesus teach and saw many of his miracles. Yes. Then you know why I left everything to follow him. And I was not the only one. A moment in time that changed a life. Mary Magdalene met her Lord and Savior that day. Mary Magdalene, a servant who became a disciple of Jesus Christ. What do we know about Mary Magdalene? We know that seven demons were taken from her by Jesus, and she was freed from a life of helpless despair. She likely came from a small fishing village called Magdala on the west side of the Sea of Galilee. She's mentioned 12 times in the Gospels, more than any other woman in the New Testament. Mary Magdalene became a dedicated, passionate follower of Jesus Christ. Lives transformed by Christ. Like ours, when our sin is removed like this morning during confession and absolution, our lives are freed and we too have that opportunity to walk those steps of a servant, to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I think of a motto our church synod had years ago, his love, our response. Jesus' immense love for us Jesus' work on our behalf. What is our response? Perhaps we underemphasize that last phrase too much, our response. We focus in on that love of Christ, but there's a calling. There's a desire. There's a passion to follow in his footsteps. My definition for the word disciple is a faithful follower who knows Christ grows in Christ, and shows Christ in their daily life. To know, to grow, to show Christ is our mission in those steps that we take as a servant. What a joy it is to know that Mary Magdalene was a dedicated servant of Christ. More than those male disciples that were in hiding, Mary Magdalene went out that first morning, that first Sunday morning after Good Friday to finish the work that couldn't have been completed on Friday night because of the Sabbath laws of the Jews. So Mary walked alone, not knowing what to anticipate, just knowing that she had something she still needed to do for the one who gave her freedom and gave her purpose in life. Mary would experience several surprises that morning, beginning with the fact when she got there, the stone in front of that tomb was gone. It had been rolled away. Caught up in shock, misbelief, and perhaps just a glimmer of hope, she runs back to tell those disciples that the stone is rolled away and the body of Jesus is missing. And they come running to that tomb and John and Peter both look in, and all they find are burial claws. But there is no body. The body is gone. One can only imagine the emotions and thoughts that must have circulated through those disciples' hearts and minds as they returned home that first Easter morning, wondering what had happened to their Lord. But Mary remained behind, and now for the first time, she goes into that tomb and finds herself confronted by two angels, two men dressed in white, radiant white, sitting where Jesus had laid. And she wonders, where have you taken him? Where is my Savior? And then she turns, and she hears a voice so familiar. She hears her name spoken by her Lord, Mary. and her heart overflows. Her joy 
is being fulfilled, it begins to blossom up as she says to him, Teacher, she recognizes her Lord and Savior. Oh, what a joy it is to know that we have a risen Savior. But there's so much to learn from Mary. Mary Magdalene, the one delivered from demons. Mary Magdalene, that dedicated disciple of Jesus Christ. Mary Magdalene, the one and only one at that tomb that first Easter morning. Mary Magdalene, the first one who recognizes her risen Lord. And she, the first one who shares the message, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Mary Magdalene has much to teach us about walking those steps as a servant, dedicated, passionate, taking those risks of for her very life to know and walk with her Lord and Savior. That's our calling as well, that we would be messengers of that Savior, that we would be the ones proclaiming a resurrected Lord to a dying world. To know what that's about, read the book of Acts about those first disciples and their work of spreading that message of the risen Lord and Savior and beginning the work of the church that would last for centuries. This week, this last week, I did something different. I pre-planned my funeral this last week. I went to a funeral director and laid out the service, the words for the eulogy, the burial plan. I thought it was a convenient time to go, being Lent as it is, a time to reflect on life, a time to reflect on death, a time to reflect on love, eternal love. It's not about where life ends here on earth. It's where it continues in heaven above because of that risen Lord and Savior, the same one that Mary Magdalene and those other disciples knew. I know as well, as do you. Lent is a remarkable time of year to reflect on our love for our Lord, to take those dedicated steps as a disciple, to move forward in our faith life, to look forward to that day we will see our Lord and Savior face to face in heaven above. He first took those steps for us, those steps to the cross and beyond, that we would know life with him that never ends because we took the steps, he took the steps, we joined in steps in heaven for all eternity. Yes, our Lord is risen. We know the truth, and now it's time to live our life with fulfillment and dedication and hope and joy because our risen Lord has come for us as well. Amen. We stand and join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in and God, God the, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We will receive our offerings at this time. We thank you for your continued support of all that goes on here at Peace. Uh, the opportunities to give are the plates that are always at the door and then the opportunity to give online as well on our website. We pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son into this world and into our lives. 
that we might know that we have a crucified but also risen Savior. Lord, we thank you for the love that you have shown to us. We ask that you re receive these offerings this morning as one of the many ways in which we can respond to the love that you have shown to us. All this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. the opportunity to go to our Lord in prayer. Um, to add to our prayers this morning, we're going to add Joe Sinkler, who's the husband of Charlotte Sinkler, and then we're going to add Pastor Joe Schultz to our prayers this morning because he actually passed away last night. We prayed that he entered hospice yesterday, um, but he passed away sometime after the evening service last night. Got that text message later on. So we'll pray for Pastor Joe Schultz and his family. Let us pray. O Lord, deliver us from contending that we are righteous before you because of who we are and what we have done. Surely we are sinners who only deserve your wrath and punishment. Cause us to turn from our worthlessness and hold fast to the surpassing worth of Jesus and his righteousness for us. O Lord, you gave your Son to be rejected by sinners, that we might become, that we might be welcomed into your kingdom. Preserve your church in this life, won for us by Christ who is crucified and risen. Give faithfulness to the preaching of your word and administration of your sacraments, and let your people receive these gifts with penitence and faith. O Lord, salvation belongs to you. Your blessings be on your people. And now parents, with every good gift to teach their children, your ways always 
that we may live in the confidence of your grace and salvation. Lord, we especially remember our families today from Peace, Dan and Lisa Lucht, Anna, Kara, Lily and Liam Lucht, John and Lou Lucht, Chad Lurison, Holly and Nick Lurison, and Zachary Lurison. O Lord, you sustain us each day, granting us sleep and then waking us up again. Be the consolation of those who live in anxiety and fear, assuring them of your mercy and, deliver and deliverance in Jesus. O Lord, bestow your kindness to all those in need. We especially, we especially pray for peace members today, Mark Neiferth, Bob Herman, Joe and Charlotte Sinclair, Bev Wardinger, and Stephanie Wolf. And then friends and family of peace members, Lester Burns, Joe Goldbach, Alan Kraus, Carl Ehlers, Don Smith, Lila Pilhofer, and Kathy Nielsen. Lord, your son is in fact raised from the dead, and we have an immense amount of comfort in his resurrection. Lord, we ask that you give the comfort, give this comfort to the family of Pastor Joe Schultz as he passed away yesterday. Remind them of the confidence that they have in the pastor that and the confidence that Pastor Joe Schultz has in his resurrection in Jesus Christ, his risen Lord. Lord, we also pray for all military personnel who are serving. We, also, we especially pray for all those listed in our bulletin this morning, that they may be bought, brought safely back to us, that you may heal them in mind, body, soul, and spirit as they are brought back, that uh, we might shower them with our love. Lord, we also ask that you grant peace to Ukraine, be with the Russian leaders over there, give them a heart of kindness and love that they might stop their military violence and that the Ukrainian people might live again in peace. O Lord, in baptism, you have shared Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection with us, that we might be raised from the dead. Preserve us from taking his sacrifice for granted. Encourage us to forget what lies behind and strain forward to what lies ahead until we attain the resurrection from the dead. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now stand and pray together that prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and prayers. We pray. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son <laughs> into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On that night, when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he also took that cup, and after giving thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, 
Drink of it, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take and eat the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take and eat the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take and drink the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Shed on that cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins.
Please stand. Now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in this Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Christ is our cornerstone, on him alone we build. With his true saints alone, the courts of heaven are filled. All his great love, our hopes we place of present grace and joys of